The first thing on our agenda for the workshop is a level three site plan and conditional use, 175 Auburn Street, Lyseth Elementary School, Portland Public Schools is the applicant and Jean is our planner. Thank you, Chair. I'll do uh, a quick overview highlighting a couple of the, the issues that might be the subject of a conversation or a discussion today. So the Education Department is the applicant on this proposing two additions to the Lyseth Elementary School. The total is 14,476 square feet. There are two parts to that, but they are not additional classrooms. They are uh, primary, well, they are uh, support facilities for the school. A school enlargement of this nature is a conditional use in the R2 residential zone. So, just to highlight the fact that it's subject to both the site plan and the conditional use standards. The, um, the, the proposed additions do impact the immediate site really f uh, for the most part and there are also the stormwater management of the site and these in turn have been designed generally to integrate with the ongoing improvements and some of you will remember that there, were, there was a, a report on those improvements back in January 2018 that cover the wider campus and I'll come back to that in a moment. So the proposals comprise as I said uh, two additions there's a smaller addition at the front of the school to provide office and reception space. I won't go into detail because I know the applicant will cover that. But in terms of the site plan, that has necessitated the relocation of the bus drop-off lane, I think somewhat slightly. And then the bus drop-off lane and its intersection with the uh, area that's towards the athletic fields and the back of the Lyman Moore School is a uh, part of uh, the kind of an amendment in a sense to the previously approved site plan for that immediate area. The larger addition is at the back for a gym and a library. It's largely between two existing wings on the north side of the school with a landscaped courtyard linking it to the school itself. And that uh, has primarily, I think, necessitated the location of the access, the fire access lane that uh, runs along the north side of the school site near the uh, boundary. So one other piece of it is that these additions increase the impervious uh, surface area of the school and the proposals address that by adding an additional stormwater treatment area right near the additions. And then, and this is a big piece of this proposal, so I'm just highlighting this, that they're the, as part of this, they're also implementing uh, the stormwater improvements that are pretty much at the opposite end of the campus towards Auburn Street that include uh, filtration and uh, retention and were part of the overall stormwater drainage scheme that was approved back in January 2018. And then that area in turn included some parking realignment, some lane reconfiguration, and in particular some pedestrian improvements near the Junior Street School, where, which were the subject of a lot of public comments during that review. So all of that area um, kind of at the western end that had a lot of uh, benefits in different ways for the campus are also going to be done as part of this uh, as, as with the additions as one as one phase and as I mentioned there were an, a couple of previous approvals but on page three of the memo I've tried to summarize I don't know if I've made it more complicated or or helped uh, of the previous uh, site plan approvals and how those relate to different parts of the site and then because all of the approvals were to some extent phased because the work needed to be done during the school years uh, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry the summers and not during the school year different sections have been implemented at different times or would be implemented at different times so that also adds to the complexity of it but this is effectively this application that's before you is effectively uh, the second phase with some minor amendments and I have included just for reference a very simple small copy of the original site plan that was approved in 2018 that's right after the um, fire department comments uh, at, the, at this time, I have not received any written uh, public comments, but I would note, and I did note in the memo, that Portland Trails have asked to have the opportunities or the scope for linking through 
the site with their trails and also the uh, bicycle byway program uh, through Bruce Hyman is also looking for a similar sort of interconnections and improvements to the bike trails through the site and also from the site out into the neighborhood and to connect with the wider network. So further work is I know is going to be done on that so that your final submissions will include a more, f um, a more firm set of, of proposals on that. So a couple of key issues, and, and they're also outlined in more detail in the memo. Under the conditional use review, I think there really is uh, one area where the conditional use standards uh, need to be considered as they apply here. Uh, the standards that refer to the design and operation of the proposed use require, and I'm kind of quoting here, that the effects or impacts on surrounding properties are not substantially greater than those associated with surrounding uses or other allowable uses in the zone, nor create harmful conditions by reason of noise, lighting, etc. So in that context, staff have raised a question over the impacts of the proximity of the gym building, which is a higher building, um, somewhat blank, with a couple of uh, exit doors on the fire lane, which has been relocated in, it, in turn, it's been relocated nearer to the property boundary and therefore nearer to residences on the north side. So that's just a question mark in terms of whether any buffering or any other, um, there may be other ways to address that. And then in terms of uh, more site plan uh, related items, uh, the, the work around the actual license school that's proposed is relatively minor and the staff have, as you've seen in, in some of the comments, supported the amended lane um, kind of on the south side that's towards the athletic fields. The fire department are, are, are ha comfortable with the, uh, the turning radii and so on for that, but they're less comfortable and, and they've commented that to get fire appliances into the north fire lane, the one that goes along the back of, of the gym, it looks more problematic on the site plan. I'm sure that can be resolved and I know the applicant's going to be working on that. So that was a fire comment that's, that uh, needs to be addressed. And then the other comment under site plan was that they, that there's a suggestion that the site lighting may need to be augmented to address pedestrian safety, some of the paths leading to the to the school, and also to address septet objectives because the parking lot on the south side of the building is a long way towards the back rear of that site towards a sort of a more wooded area. So again, further information and clarification is on, on that is suggested by staff. So that's my quick intro, thank you. Thank you, Jean. Are there any clarifying questions for staff at this point? Seeing none, we will hear from the applicant. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Steve Silfen, Facilities Director with the Portland Public Schools, uh, Assistant Director of Doug Sherwood, P Portland Public Schools. Chair, I'd like to just give a brief introduction to the project. This license project, as you know, or may not know, is part of, or the first school in the building for a futures uh, a school referendum that passed in 2017. And in that referendum to renovate four schools, Lyseth is the first representation of, of areas of uh, a new secure entrance, separation of cafeteria from gym, new learning spaces, uh, <coughs> fire uh, and sprinkler protection and also um, new library and, and uh, common learning areas within the design processes that were being pulled together for the last seven years. And um, so I have with me this evening the uh, architects, Hermans, architect and engineers. I'll introduce the, uh, uh, Doug, would you like to say a word? Yeah. Um don't want anyone to forget the imagery that you're seeing on this cover slide. You know, the ship is keeping us afloat and getting a stiff wind behind. We hope you're with us. Um, the other aspects of that, you'll see this is a, one of our few schools that has a significant amount of green or an investment in the outdoors. Um, the far right-hand corner is actually the second courtyard where we're not building the gym. 
in the library and it will stay as you see it almost in its context you know they, they keep it the way we want it to be in fact there's going to be a lot of greening aspects in the building itself once you get to see it opened on each side of our new addition for the gym and library my fifth trip to see you all in 19 years so welcoming it so with that, I would like to introduce uh, Harriman's uh, lead engineer on the project, uh, Frank, and uh, the lead architect, Mark, and the project manager, Lisa. And they're here to uh, contribute with any questions that you may have during the presentation. And uh, we'll move forward through with this. And if you do have questions, just please, you know, holler them out. Thank you. Very good, thank you Steve and Doug. Those are inspiring words, Doug. So my name is Mark Lee, I'm an architect with Harriman. And uh, I'll go through uh, the first couple of slides here. I think uh, operation is the mouse, okay. And let's see here, there we go. Uh, the uh, overview of, of quickly what the design is, uh, and we'll see it in the context of the site itself, but the existing building is like a backwards E, and so the blue and gray areas are the existing footprint of the building. The second courtyard that was that upper right image that Doug spoke of is this area right here. Uh, and the additions are uh, outlined in the, the orange or, or yellow rectangles. There's a new entrance being put on the front of the building that creates a security point uh, for entrancing the, the, the building itself. And so it's largely administrative function in that space and, and a nurse's uh, space as well. And then uh, the gymnasium addition is an elementary school size gym. It's not necessarily a full size gym. It's a little smaller than, than what we typically put for a full size court. But it has a stage uh, in this area right here uh, and bleachers right here and then a connector into the a common lobby space in the center of the building and then a new library uh, right here. So that's, that's the footprint. These bars are, are classroom bars and they'll remain that way. Uh, there's renovation throughout the building itself. It's over a phased uh, period period of time uh, and so that that uh, occupied during that time frame as well just a blow up of the areas that receive uh, additions and and uh, more significant renovation so this is the connector and as Doug mentioned we'll have we'll be bisecting the the uh, courtyard and the, and the uh, front half of the building here, the westerly portion of it, and creating two smaller courtyard spaces which will receive uh, some landscaping and really uh, what we think to be wonderful outdoor uh, spaces that are really internal to the building. And, and those are closed off by gates uh, with panic hardware, so they are secured spaces. There's one right here and there's one right here. Uh, but they really provide an, a really wonderful location to get natural light, uh, see landscaping, uh, and even be outdoors in a secured environment. The, uh, the gymnasium, so you can see the court lines itself. The only fenestration uh, on the, on the uh, gym addition, we have a window that faces into the courtyard right here uh, and then we also have a window right here that um, faces uh, this direction sort of west um, this wall itself has has no fenestration this is the wall that faces the abutters there's a service uh, lane or public safety uh, access through here there are uh, emergency egress doors that are solid uh, on this face of the wall um, but but there's no no fenestration and, and we uh, did that intentionally to prevent uh, any disruption of uh, activity or light uh, to the the abutters because it, it gets uh, the closest to um, the property line at this location. This is simply a ramp uh, for handicap access up to the to the uh, stage. And so here's the the existing as it as it stands today. Um, this is a portable structure that exists in that courtyard. So essentially we're gonna take that portable out but we're gonna be putting in the uh, gymnasium addition right there and you'll see that in a second. Uh, and then the current, uh, what's uh, both a cafeteria, gymnasium, and multi-purpose room uh, gets uh, converted just to the cafeteria itself. So this is the, the bus, currently the bus drop off. Uh, that gets tightened up because the addition that we're putting for the administration functions goes right here. So the the, uh, there, there you can see where the impact is of the addition. So that's the uh, administration addition. And then you can see the, uh, so I'll go back and forth there. You can see the impact to that. So, so this gray drive right here does get pushed 
out uh, right here uh, to have service access to the back area of the building itself. It does not continue, the drive itself doesn't continue around, but there is a paved path uh, that goes around the building. The, um, and so largely this, this area uh, doesn't receive a lot of uh, rework. Um, there's a little bit of paving that goes on in this uh, courtyard and there's a new electric service that comes into this side of the building. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Frank Crabtree, who's the civil engineer, and he'll walk through a little bit more of the site uh, uh, information for you. Frank? I'm Frank Crabtree, a civil engineer at Harriman. Um, and as Mike was saying, the, the, um, and that the last couple of slides showed, there's a fairly minor um, impact to the site from these additions. Uh, they're very compact, uh, right in within this area of the building. They do uh, make some minor changes around the building to the pavements. Uh, this um, uh, fire lane being pushed out along the edge of the property line here, changed to some of the pathways uh, up in here that go up into Martin Road pathway, and also a tightening of the bus loop, even though it's going to stay in the same location. And for now, uh, at this stage, we're also keeping the parent drop-off loop in, in its same location, the lighter gray here. Um, I just want to point out, I think Gene mentioned it, but I just want to point, again, point out again that we, in, in early discussions with them, uh, with the planning staff, we decided that we would approach this as the Lyseth Building Project and not an amendment to the, the larger previous campus project. Uh, hopefully for simplicity, uh, even though there was a lot of dovetailing of the two, uh, which I'll get into a little bit, but we felt that was the best way to keep it clean and say, this is a building expansion project and it has a little bit of site work around it, but how does it dovetail into the last year's uh, circulation project? Um, <clears throat> so we're coordinating uh, the construction of the two um, and the major areas of concern uh, when we talked about this entire, the previous construction project or the previous permit um, was around Junior Street uh, because there was some concern at the last, um, in the last permit negotiations that the, uh, the traffic at Junior Street was a bit of, of an issue, congested, uh, maybe a little confused. Uh, so if you can see this dark area here, uh, which we'll call the Junior Street uh, and the storm drainage area, this part of the uh, original permit from last year will be constructed concurrently with the Lyseth School because, number one, it, we want to improve the Junior Street intersection and we also need the stormwater treatment, which is within this new uh, green detention basin here, to offset what is going on at the school, uh, not for the new construction, but actually for the uh, removing of some of the existing roof water from the combined sanitary sewer system, uh, which is a great move, but it is causing a, a bit of an overload in the storm system when that water that's been going to sewer now goes to storm. Uh, we're going to do that by putting it into the pipe network that comes down into this wetland here that um, is already at capacity. So once that's done, uh, the feeling was that we needed to provide this previously permitted uh, detention and treatment basin to offset that roof water. The, now that, that is um, separate from the water we're, the stormwater we're treating from the new additions, which um, as Gene mentioned, we are putting in a new system that will be treating the entire roof water from the gym and library, which is the biggest part of this addition. Uh, it'll be underground right out in front of the school in a chamber bed filtration system. Then the effluent from that will be piped into the storm system and also end up down here. Uh, in the wetland. That has been um, calculated to be of no change uh, pre and post development. Just this is a piece of the permit from last year uh, showing the configuration around Junior Street will be 
building this pretty much as it is here with very minor uh, modifications um, and that is intended to be constructed during 2019 uh, along with the start of the Lyseth School project. Now we supplied this drawing uh, last week, I believe, as Jean was saying, we, we needed something that showed the bus routing and the parent routing. Um, this is intended to be for this construction season. Whereas this plan, which was uh, the full build out of the site circulation project, shows the separation of parent uh, vehicles in this small inner lane here. And that's what we're showing here in pink, uh, is the parent vehicle tracking to the uh, inside, I guess you'd call it, uh, towards the parking lot um, through the front of both the middle school and the elementary school. The bus lane tracking close to the curb line here, uh, separated by the new island, by the middle school. They will have to come back together for a short period uh, with no island, and then they're separated again up here at the elementary school. Uh, so the piece um, in the center here will not be part of this season's construction. This is a drawing, and, and maybe we don't need to get into all of this right now, uh, but I did supply this as, as well when Jean uh, requested that we need to show all of the components that are changing from the 2018 permitted site. Um, so again, with that, we have areas here that are shown. They're not very easy to see, but they're outlined in red. Uh, this area back in here is modified because, of course, when they did that, they didn't know uh, what these building um, additions were going to look like. So most everything that has changed on this overall permit from last year uh, is related to the Lysis School, uh, tweaking of some of these drive lanes. One of the things that we did work with uh, the fire department uh, and the planning department on is down here at the south corner, uh, that may show up better at uh, this plan, the, um, the fire department had concerns, and I guess they never were fully vetted uh, during the last project of how they would get through here with their uh, large trucks. So we took a, another look at it and decided to put an island in um, right in this area, uh, which is a very low, inch and a half high concrete island that can very easily be run over, but it's also uh, enough to show the, the typical daily motorists uh, that they need to split uh, and they're in and out motions through this little intersection. But the, the fire vehicles can uh, swing over it, uh, around it, depending on whether there's a vehicle coming out or not, they can come straight through. Uh, so uh, the chief seemed quite happy with this uh, last week when we uh, had another discussion about it. Up in this area, we also looked at the fire trucks coming into the back beyond the new addition and this configuration of pavement back in here um, is enough for them to also maneuver in. They can only go up to the corner of the building up in here but they can back up and go back out and they felt that was satisfactory. The one area as Jean mentioned that they were a little still uh, concerned about was right here because this is a one-way out aisle and the circulation you know, is counterclockwise here. So they want to be able to come in a one of these lanes and turn and come up through. We are putting a gate here because uh, the school does not want vehicles back there uh, that don't belong back there, only emergency or um, authorized vehicles. But the fire department is, is concerned about this turn, so we're going to look at that again and probably do some hardscape right on this corner. And then finally, um, how does this fit into the whole picture of what was presented last year with this campus circulation plan? Um, last year they did construct, uh, and this doesn't include the fields, I know the fields were done previously as well, but this is just the, the hardscapes basically. They did build 
this parking lot for the middle school and they did some work here along with um, storm drainage and a new sidewalk and some curbing uh, that's where they stopped last year we're calling the next step phase two um, the Lyseth school project which will complete the storm drainage that they had designed but modify it up in in the back here will also complete the bus loop and the work all around the school will be re all the paving will be redone but it will also as you see include this uh, storm drainage and uh, junior street improvement area and then and that's this season um, <clears throat> The school will take more than one year to complete, but this will all begin this season. What's going on in the center here with the bus drop-off, parent drop-off separation in front of the middle school and the redo of this large parking lot uh, is going to have to be pushed off to another construction season. So that's um, my presentation at this point. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and if there are any questions, we'd them. Excellent. Uh, are there any clarifying questions for the applicant? Bob? Make sure your mic's on. Okay. I was curious about the circulation. You had yellow and red for the, car, uh, the parents' cars and the bus. Was the blue pedestrian or? Yes, I'm sorry. I guess I went too fast. Uh, whoops. Um, <clears throat> yes, that was, <clears throat> as Jean mentioned about the trails, bikeways, and pedestrian, the blue are basically all of that rolled into one. All of the sidewalks are shown. Um, there are some areas that aren't sidewalks necessarily right here on the new fire lane. Uh, as we talked with the uh, Portland Trails representative uh, last week, um, I believe he was talking about a way to come up uh, from Auburn Street and come out back here there's the the martin road pathway which we're providing a, a a handicapped ada accessible route now that that there hasn't been previously um that can also continue around the back of the building over here to the um to the bramblewood um development there's a trail there now and then uh Pine Grove Trail comes down in here to Allen Avenue. So he was very interested in how we would make those connections, asked that we widen our pathways that we're going to make from whatever we were doing, five feet or so, up to eight feet, and we said, sure, we can do that. Um, so I imagine there'll be some more discussion on that. Then the Junior Road intersection, are, is that encouraging traffic to go to Auburn Street or to Junior Road, or how does that work? That was... <laughs> That was really discussed last year, and I wasn't involved in that discussion, unfortunately. What we've talked about is having a, um, making sure, right now there's a two-way stop. Uh, there's a stop coming in from Junior Street, and there's a stop on the exit from the school, the Lyseth School. This configuration uh, tries to formalize this. It also straightens it out, because right now there isn't a straight line here between the junior street and this this intersection but there'll be a stop here as well so it'll basically be a three-way stop and then this is a one-way uh, exit here so so hoping that that so will it makes it more orderly as a exactly package. that's the plan Austin oh Frank um so the cafetorium is being converted into a pure cafeteria. Could you describe how the food service occurs and how the waste is handled? Um, what provisions you have for that? Is there a screening element? And because that does have a lot of visibility to the south. The intention going forward is, has been for our elementary schools and the middle schools and, to, and as well now Casco Bay High School, all of our food service comes out of Central Kitchen, 92 Waldron Way. So they'll have a traditional delivery to the back of the cafeteria and the food will be final prepped and served on site. Very limited kitchen capability. So 
what is the size of the truck? How often does the delivery occur? Is it once a day? And it's, typ so it's typically once a day for, for food. It's prepared, prepared at Central Kitchen, delivered the day before, set up and prepped the next day to serve. Um, I believe the, the milk deliveries are once a week now. And an occasional, you know, you'll have dry goods shipments, but very limited to the, that site. And how about the waste? Do you know the size of the dumpster? Is there a provision for screening for that? Yeah, there'll be screening for the dumpster uh, as we shift it a little bit further off the back door where it is now. It's actually screened into the back corner. You really can't see it until you're around the building and in, but we'll be accommodating that accordingly. Okay, thank you. David? Just a, um, a, a couple of questions. Um, one is, is uh, when you design walkways uh, especially for kids um, I've seen like r the Riverton a few years ago there was an extension built off the backside of Riverton and there was a, a path that was uh, put at, you know part of the landscaping nice design and it turned out after a year or two you, the s school had to install a set of stairs because kids didn't follow the path they go direct to the playground they don't go to the left and go around the little handicap ramp and so you had to then throw in this god-awful cement prefab stairway with a railing and then the kids would just go down the hill and so you ended up having a runoff and then you lose the integrity of the embankment and you know from a design perspective it looks awful and this is after you know came to the planning board and the city spent a fair amount of money putting that new back entrance on Riverton and then we had on the Ocean Street uh, Ocean, uh, Ocean Elementary School rain gardens which were supposed to be in, near the front of the school which were designed to not attract kids to go through them and the integrity of those rain gardens depended upon no foot traffic over time and and they're, they're counting I mean I was a kid you see kids and they see the world differently and I, I guess I'm, I'm just hopeful that when you design pathways between the new gym and this is a great looks beautiful but when you design pathways you realize kids, elementary school kids, junior high school kids, they'll go wherever they want to go, but elementary school kids just take the path of least resistance unless there's some kind of bush or barrier that prevents them from doing so. And I just wouldn't want to see the same thing that happened at Riverton, and the city spent some nice money, it was a nice back addition, new meeting rooms, new entranceway, and then the whole back entranceway just looks, looks awful. And so um, uh, it's, not, it's really more, a, when you go back and look at this, I guess I'd, I just want some reality check when you come for public hearing that um, you really look closely at uh, what you're doing, especially between buildings. I mean, all around, you know, driveways, entranceways, you could have sidewalks. I understand that. But really, in terms of where you have kid movements, that the kids are really, that really is going to parallel. It's going to match mostly what kids are going to do. So that's, that's the first observation. Second observation is the, the fire lane on the far side. Is a, is a, the, the, the East End School was built. And at my I was on the planning board back then. And my recollection was because of the East End, the, the Eastern Prom Master Plan, there was a fire lane uh, parallel to the Eastern Prom. And uh, there wasn't going to be any parking there. There was going to be a gate, which was going to be for emergency vehicle access only. And so it got built, and now you have parking all along the side which is visible from the Eastern Prom. My recollection is that wasn't the intent or the plan but it is what it is now and I guess uh, given how there are usually more par there's more needs for parking than sometimes there is on a site. The East End School was pressed, there's a lot of public streets that were available. Um, w is the fire lane really going to be a fire lane and if so what steps are going to be taken to you make sure it's not going to be used for parking over time? That's a question I have. And, and then, the, the, because I think what's happened on the East End School, uh, um, that's what's happened. And it wasn't part of the initial design because of the concerns with the Eastern Prom Master Plan, which didn't want anyone walking up and down the Eastern Prom to see cars parked in front of the school up on the hill. But that's what you have now. You have about 30, 20 cars on a very, what was intended to be just a fire lane. That's my recollection when I was on the planning board back then. So um, that, that's a, 
that's some the question I have on that. And the other question, and I know the, the parking lot may have been part of the initial phase, but I'm just, and generally these days when people are, especially the cities putting in a new parking facilities, and, and any thought given to charging stations? You know, we're here and, and uh, you know, electric vehicles are coming, who knows, but I mean, if you're putting in infrastructure, uh, what, what's the thought on that? I, I, I mean, I just don't know, but if we're looking at, with the way life cycles work for elementary schools in Portland, they intended the last 30 years, they're gonna have to last 60 years. And my kids went to the Hall School, which was now the Amanda Rose School, but, so those are, those are just some observations. I think it's a great design, and it's exciting to see it come along, but um, uh, so those, are, those are some. David, is there actual questions you want answered tonight? Is there anything, are, are there actual questions you want, or is this for, to come back? Yes? Yeah. Which ones did you, because I, what are the questions? Well, the, the, the questions they have about pedestrian movements for the kids, the fire uh, lane, is, what steps are going to be taken to, to, if that's really intended not to be parking, uh, what's going to, what's going to, how's that going to be enforced? And uh, thank you. You raise very good questions, as you observe through our district, that we have intention for permitting and parking is a, is a very good example. And emergency access to the vehicles, it's, it's our policies and procedures, too, as well, that we're looking at to have uh, discipline to those policies and procedures um, and be proactive on events to regulate parking in, in events and so forth. So that's the reality of the, the schools. If the gate is there, then we will enforce that is for emergency vehicles only. And if we have an event, we will do what we need to do to organize parking if it's going to overflow. But um, and it goes to the trail systems as well. If we look at the tightness of this this project in its entirety, and you've been looking at this for some years now, is that we squeeze this thing pretty good. Um, with these new trails, it gives us access with bicycles and maybe even different where places where parents will pick their children up after school that are behind and off some of these trails. So as a school district, we're looking at ways to um, educate and excite these kids to be part of the solutions instead of being in the way of a fire truck or in a, in a parking lot that they are not being seen when they are coming and being dropped off at the school. So that's our, our role in it. So it, it's, I think as a planning board and what you put forward and, and hardscapes and so forth are all going to be looked at very closely, but we have our part in it as well. And it's uh, revitalizing that idea in our department with our students. So, um, thank you. Did that address? Just to help you a little bit with the design of those walkways. Yeah, the. Um, I guess it's a simple question. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we usually. It's, it's always, like you said, it's always the case where you put a path where you think they'll go, <laughs> and maybe they just do it out of spite. You know, they go a different way. Uh, but. The only, we're not really modifying a lot of the, um, the trails, the pathways. If you look at this plan here, the, these lighter colored ones, it's all, they're all paved walkways that aren't changing. We're only indicating the, the uh, dark, which is new bituminous pavement. And up in here is the major area that we needed to renovate because uh, currently this um, uh, fire lane, which is not gated, uh, comes in right straight across the backs of the two wings and the trail uh, coming down the hill here from um, uh, Bartley Street, uh, Bartley Avenue, is, um, uh, comes right straight down. But by pushing the fire lane back, we had to make some modifications and in fact decided that we put in this curve which is actually gives now ADA accessibility because it's 5% which this, this has never had. It's always been too steep here for any uh, ADA access. Uh, we also thought this curve would be cool, that the kids would love it uh, on their bikes um, coming down through here. But the straight path is also being continued through the little um, 
sitting circle area here with a stairway because there are probably five steps down um, and we wanted to continue that as well. So we're, we're trying to make provisions for what we think they would do, uh, but you're right. I mean, they might strike off down the, over the bank and develop a new trail. <laughs> uh, the, the rest, I believe, are all um, accessible. We are changing in the front of the school. Uh, we are changing the, the path um, th that comes up to the front door uh, for security's sake. Um, because that is offset and there are some new bollards along the front um, that will prevent uh, vehicles from having a straight shot towards the front doors. So that one's being changed a little bit. Other than that, the rest of the, uh, the trails are pretty much staying as they are. Okay. David Eaton. Thanks. When we reviewed this last year, I remember, maybe staff can help me uh, recall exactly, but there was some discussion of an involving personnel in an active traffic management plan, maybe traffic directors, as this um, new uh, circulation pattern was evolved. And I thought we had left it that some further written plan was going to be developed. I don't know if anybody recalls that or not, but have, What's going on there in terms of managing what was uh, identified as a real concern on the part of the neighbors, and that is um, the current and proposed uh, traffic safety, I think, especially with Junior Street, but in the whole area. Is there, any, is there anything new since then? Uh, maybe Mr. Uh, ben might know of a policy, but I'm not aware of any policy that's been written in the time that I've been here, but uh, the principle is Ben, principal of uh, Lyman Moore, is out on the out on the street directing traffic every morning. And um, do do you have a written policy? We don't. I mean, no. it's so it's come up to the mic and introduce yourself, please. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh, ben Donaldson, principal at Lyman Moore Middle School. Um, and so we talked about a year ago about how this was all going to be guided and. Um, we said as much signage as can be added is helpful to a certain degree um, to those who are wanting to read signs and um, willing to follow those. But what it really comes down to is teaching people how to access and how to use a new circulation pattern. Um, so it does come down to school staff, school personnel to be out in directing traffic. Um, the particular piece of that is student behavior. Um, you know, how kids are going to safely access and move throughout um, a new traffic pattern is something that, you know, I'm thinking about just looking at this. Um, but we don't have an enumerated plan of, of how, to, how to manage it. Um, it does come down to us being present and helping families, you know, we can educate them and say, here's the in, here's the out, um, here are the new lanes. Um, but it does come down to basic human nature. Um, parents want to get to school drop their kid off or pick their kid up and leave as soon as possible. Um, they don't want to do a lot of um, circuitous work. Um, and so the, the three-way stop at Junior is a question how that will function with buses and traffic incoming. And um, so maybe and somebody could speak to that, how that actually works, because I'd love to know how to make it work. <laughs> Good question. And I'll help. But David, let me. And one other thing I don't think was uh, mentioned, if it was, I didn't uh, catch it, is coming out of Junior Street towards the, the, the campus, a, a right hand turn only, that sh and then the uh, counterclockwise circulation in the forward part where the, the, the stormwater treatment area is, would be short circuiting any for the more t folks coming in and the coming out of Junior Street to a right instead of. You know, getting a short circuit right there. So that's one of the things we talked about in, in some of the pre planning with staff. Because two way traffic in this spot is problematic. So right here, coming off Junior Street and people trying to cut through to go to Lyseth. Um, when you have outgoing traffic from Lyman Moore, it's, you know, from those short loops up here in, in the, on the entrance, that's a, that's a real pinch point. But did, and I just I want to clarify what you said, David, because last year when we were he looking at the project, I do vaguely remember a discussion that there was going to be a managed, to be developed plan, right. whether that included somebody being out there at all times. 
dealing with parents or talking to parents? Wasn't there, Barbara, do you remember? Um, Especially around Junior Street, I thought. Yeah, uh, specifically around Junior Street, I thought. We've got um, the, the approval letter um, and the condition uh, read that the applicant site manager monitor the internal parking lot painted so sidewalk to determine if blocking is an issue, monitor signage and parking management, including on Junior Street, and monitor the lighting levels at key pedestrian safety locations and consider few excuse me, consider um, further action if necessary, uh, parentheses, such as removable bollards to protect the pedestrian path and additional lighting. So I, I think that was more of a monitoring provision once some of these improvements are in then to monitor what is happening and whether additional improvements were needed. I don't, I don't think we had a, um, a, a yeah, I, I don't think there was to be a, parking plan at this point, um, if okay. that's what you're recalling. I, I'm not sure it was a parking plan more, I think. Right, it was, it's um, safety. it was a safety plan, but I think we're all on the same yeah. page here. We want it to work, and I'm satisfied with the, okay. God bless the principal for being out there every Thank morning. Thank you. <laughs> you anything, Maggie? Yes. My clarifying question is, uh, the Traffic, the uh, vehicle access for the uh, fire trucks is right up against the sight line pretty much. Is there any room or way to, uh, for any buffering there? I don't think. That is right behind the new gymnasium, you mean? Yeah. Yes. No, there, it is really tight. Um, there's 20 feet uh, from the property line to the building. Uh, the fire department needs a 16 foot lane. Uh, so we have 17 feet a lane plus a three foot retaining wall there's a, there's a height difference of about three feet it's a little short wall but that takes up about three feet of width as well there just isn't any real estate there to do some other screening okay. I want to jump on that I guess a little bit because it was partly one of my questions as well what about snow maintenance is that going to be going on to neighbors yards or how are you going to handle snow on that fire access if there's no buffer um, snow is always a challenge here in Portland it's been another interesting year um, for sure um, in this particular case and and for even as it exists now it's normally taken back you know, uh, against the traffic as you would expect it to come back out of the building. You know, go, you're going to go in and keep pushing back to the second courtyard, and then up left, if you will, going out towards where the drainage is on the back corner of the building. So if you go, um, come around the gym, go to the right, bear left, and take it to that back corner. Okay. And Gene, are there, I guess adding on to Maggie's point, are there setback requirements in that need to be met? My understanding is a 20 foot setback and the building meets that 20 foot setback because the fire lane's within that, yes. And the retaining wall is not considered? Okay. Three foot. All right. Uh, hold on, Austin, hold on a sec. Bob, did you have something quickly? I have some building questions. Hold on, then. Do you have? Did you have something on this topic? I, I, I did. Um, you know, I recognize the fact that the the position of the gym and the fire lane give you've lost an opportunity to buffer between yourself and the neighbor. Is it a possibility to provide plant material to a neighbor to ensure that sort of buffer, but it would be on their property? Yes. If plant materials can be placed in there and they could thrive, yes, and we work with the neighbors, whether it's renewing a fence or buffering in those ways to, to keep uh, everybody comfortable with the project in the school. So we work closely with the neighbors. And is there a stock, I'm looking at the plant, is there a stockyard fence the entire length? Is that what I'm seeing on this? No. I think what you're seeing there is that is the walls that um, Frank just talked about the here it says stockyard stockade fence basically along the entire property line currently 
the whole property? Currently, there is a stockade fence. It's owned, I believe, by, by the, the neighbors. neighbors. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's back a bit onto their property, all along those uh, different properties. Um, right. So is the screen buffering effect? The the doors from the gym on the back side of that gym are for exit only in emergency. It's not an entrance door. It'll be maintained as a fire exit door. Um, so. We don't expect crowding and children out there, but um, if we will work with the neighbor and if we can accomplish some satisfactory abatement there with plants and there's room for plants, we'll certainly do that. If it's uh, the, the three-foot retain wall, then a, a, a new fence. Some of it's uh, deteriorated in, in places. We would we would work with the neighbors to make everything right. So, Bob, quickly, because we have to go to public comments still. Yeah. I was curious why there's no windows in the wall that faces the neighbors. <clears throat> yeah, the question was why are there no windows in the wall facing the neighbors and the intent was to uh, be as least disruptive with the activity and the hours of operation of anything's happening at the school just, just to give some privacy to the neighbors so that they're not looking into and, and also from the school so so it just keeps a separation between. So, so would also would noise escape through the Correct. window? Correct. Okay. It, it, it helps in that regard as well. Uh, one thing we are doing on that wall though is we're softening it but we have we have the ability to, and, and we're uh, to for, for trellis so that we can actually uh, have plant material on and there. That, that's soft. more my objection is yeah. you know one big brick wall. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're trying to soften that so that as they're looking out it'll be a little softer. Uh, on yeah. All right. Any other clarifying questions? For the applicant, uh, this is a workshop, but we uh, take public comment. Please uh, introduce yourself and your address for the record, and limit your comments to three minutes. We will collect all the comments and try to address them at the end of the public comment period. Uh, is there any public comment on this item? Hi, thank you, Jamie Parker with Portland Trails. I just wanted to uh, thank the team for including or for being willing to widen that pathway along the um, north side. As as you've heard, we've been working with um, some city staff to include this. It's already part of our Forest City Trail that runs through the property. We're also looking to um, upgrade that trail, portions of that trail, to be a uh, part of the neighborhood byway network. So, uh, hence the eight feet request. Um, so, I mean, that's that's an uh, important part of that, connecting this neighborhood over to um, to and across Auburn Street. Um, the only comment I have is, or, or question maybe, is um, the area, the access to the fire lane behind the north side of the building. Um, mentioned a gate, and uh, just one concern would be that you know that sort of um, blocks the nat natural walking path that you know people are going to take um, as they circulate around the area whether it's on the trail or not but um, so I wonder if that might be replaced with bollards um, and also gates a lot of times it seems like they're left open after a year or two and um, it's sort of they don't always function the way they're intended so I just wonder if bollards might be a solution and if it is to be a gate then I would just want to see how um, that eight-foot pathway continued, you know, to make sure that there was room around it um, to make sure that the pathway can continue in a, you know, logical, intuitive way and not have to sort of scramble over to the side. So other than that, sounds great. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other public comment on this agenda item? Once, twice, seeing no other public comment, we will close the public comment and try to address this issue. Um, do you want to opine a little bit further on the gate versus bollards versus? Yes, uh, it, this, this is a very tiny drawing, uh, but um, the gate is right here, where my hand is, <laughs> uh, and the trail and sidewalk goes around the gate, um, as he mentioned. Um, the sidewalk will continue coming up this side of the the site when, when this piece is rebuilt and will continue right up past the gate um, several feet so that people, bicycles can walk right through and not even pay attention to the gate. The gate is really there for the traffic which is right to the side of them. Then they will swing over to the right into that uh, 
fire lane and use that. So it is something that we were concerned about when we put the gate there. We wanted to make sure that uh, the kids on bikes or, or anybody walking wouldn't have to, you know, uh, be deterred by the gate. If the gate is left open and swung open, will that then now get in the way of getting back onto the trail if you're on the sidewalk? Let's say that gate is it's probably, it's a big gate, right? Um, <laughs> depends on which way it swings. I guess if it swung out, it wouldn't. If it was swung back, it might. But it's basically grass. It, it's, there's no um, changing grade there. It's pavement, grass, pavement. So I mean, if anybody had to, they could just walk across the little strip of grass. I'm thinking like on a bike, or if you had to like go up around it. Um, and why not removable bollards versus a gate? Because in Maine, they're, they're horrible. Um, okay. You know, they're just in the winter, uh, removable bollards don't work really well. Um, gates, you know, I think their intent is to keep the gate locked. The only people that would open it would be somebody maintenance or uh, emergency personnel. That will have to be plowed though, right? Yes. So every snowstorm they have to be opened. Yeah, right. okay. Um, it will go into, I guess, board deliberation. Um, the intent, I think, is for this to come back as a public hearing. Um, Gene, one of the issues that you raised, I think it was that fire lane in the back, but I'm not quite sure what feedback you need from the board on that issue specifically or I don't think I need feedback on the fire lane I think it was primarily the lighting septet issues and the one that you've already addressed around the the buffering by the gym okay um, so I guess if you have any further comments or things you want to see for the public hearing um, we'll start with Austin Sure, I think it would be beneficial to see the actual conditions between that gym and the neighbor, uh, what the grade changes are, what uh, is existing, and what is proposed, so we can make sort of a fair evaluation. I wanted to compliment you on your floor plans and the general design. I actually had the opportunity to participate in the walk through a year and a half ago that Doug performed and I sort of scratched my head and I thought, how do you solve this puzzle? And you've come up with a solution that gets daylight into those two classrooms of the lower courtyard, which is wonderful. Um, so good job. And uh, I think you're ready for a public hearing in my opinion. Thank you. Anything further? David? Bob? David? Maggie? No. Austin pretty much said what I wanted to see, so. Um. Yeah. Uh, you all set? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to add either. I do have some concerns about how tight that fire lane is, so if we can figure out a way to deal with some buffering, but I'm, I understand the the limitations there. Otherwise, um, I I think seeing some of the conditions, I actually wouldn't mind also seeing what you're sort of envisioning for a gate as well and how that's going to work. Um, but otherwise, I think um, it's a nice addition to the school and we'll look forward to seeing it at the public hearing. Does staff have everything you need from the board? Does the app can have everything you need from the board? Excellent. We will see you next time then. Thank you.